Well, it's time to do some upgrades on the Ender 5 Plus. And the first thing to happen is a hot end upgrade. Now, in a previous video, you saw me going over how I built this hot end and the parts that I chose and the reasons why I chose them. This is the stock hot end that I have yet to take off on the Ender 5. It should be just a standard Mark 8 as far as I know. But uh, the swap is pretty simple. We're going from a Bowden tube setup to a... Uh, all metal hot end set up right now but uh, first we got to disassemble everything as you can see it's just a standard mark 8 now this one is not anodized in red which is kind of interesting you typically think of the red anodizing on uh, mark 8 hot end when you think of mark 8s but it's just a standard Bowden tube setup and we're not going to do anything super fancy right now Eventually, we're going to be changing the thermistor to a hex bolt type and changing the heater from a 40 watt to a 50 watt. But that is for a later date. For now, we're just going to change the hot end because the reality is if you, if you change too much at once and then something goes wrong, then it's harder to pinpoint what exactly went wrong. So one component at a time. Yeah, it's pretty simple to get everything undone. You got to be very careful with these... Uh, glass bead thermistors because holy crikey they are sensitive they are very easy to break which is why i hate them i've since moved to those hex bolt types uh but it's all out now now the one we're going to be replacing it with isn't exactly the one in the video it is the same one but you'll notice there's a brass nozzle uh we have a clog on the hardened steel nozzle from a long time ago that we forgot to clean out. So we're going to uh, douse that with fire at a later point and swap in the hardened steel nozzle later. But for right now, we just want to get everything situated and ready to go. Okie doke, we have got our new hot end in place. We just need to bolt everything back up. And then I need to do a torquing down of the nozzle while everything is nice and hot to account for that thermal expansion. But you'll also notice we're changing the Bowden tube because no Bowden tube style system would be complete without a Capricorn Bowden tube, now would it? Now here's a tip that could possibly save you a lot of headache and a lot of money. You see, you're supposed to tighten down the nozzle when the hot end is hot to account for that thermal expansion. However, these glass bead thermistors are really close to the electrical connections on the heater cartridge. So, if you try and tighten down the nozzle and accidentally create a short between the heater cartridge and that glass bead thermistor, you're going to send electricity from the heater cartridge through the wires of the thermistor destroying your motherboard. So, real easy way to make sure that don't happen. Get everything up to temperature shut the machine off so that there's no power going to anything and now tighten down the nozzle so i've tightened down the nozzle real nice and snug and you can put more torque on a copper heat block than an aluminum one which is great because uh if i were to put that kind of torque on an aluminum block while it was hot i would have absolutely destroyed it but copper is so much stronger and does such a better job at being a heater block that uh, I didn't really have to worry about it. So things are turning out great so far. Now I just got to reassemble the fan shroud and the BL touch. Now you can't rightly call this an upgrade with compression fittings just on the hot end. You need compression fittings on the extruder too for that extra bit of reliability. Now this extruder is the stock one and it's going to be replaced with the BMG that we have laying around somewhere. But uh, for now, we're just getting some tests done. All right, it's time to feed some filament through our new custom hot end. And it's coming through nice and smooth. I can't hear any clicks in the extruder and it looks to be melting just right. Oh my god, the z-axis offset's so far off, and unlike a dial, you gotta press the stupid touchscreen constantly. 
hundreds of times to get it right. You can't change the interval. You can't type in a number. Creality, what is this garbage? Well, if there's one thing I can say with absolute certainty about what I dislike involving the Ender 5 is you can't, you can't see what you're doing for the first layer, man. This, this bar's in the way. You gotta really look in there real good and, man, you just gotta find an angle and pray that your Z height, your baby stepping was just right, which, again, that, that touch interface is horrible, but we are printing. <laughs> well, we've got ourselves a bit of tech spaghetti, but it wasn't due to the new hot end or any of that. In fact, it was going really well here. This is a little Pikachu that uh, Creality has on the SD cards that come with the machine. But, uh, unfortunately, the glass bed appears to have uh, let the Pikachu model fall off of its position and thus uh, spaghettify the rest of it. Still, the actual process of uh, what did go down properly is not bad. Now you guys know I wouldn't leave you hanging with that tech spaghetti down there, so I made another one. This is the second go around with the new hot end. And as you can see, everything came out exactly the way it's supposed to. So our little uh, <clears throat> off-brand Pikachu has printed quite nicely. The G-code is the exact same as it has been before. It's the file that comes with the Ender 5. And, uh, yeah, I'd say it came out pretty good for something that hasn't been tuned for an all-metal hot end. But, uh, I will say this, that, that Pikachu is really, really on there. Um, I'm going to need to go grab a release agent, because, uh, I've actually never seen PLA stick to something so incredibly well before. So, yeah. But, beyond that... We officially have an upgraded hot end to our full metal system. Got our Capricorn Bowden tube. Got our extruder on a compression fitting setup as well. There are so many upgrades that I plan on doing to this here printer. Because this thing is basically bone stock and there's so much potential here. This is actually a really great design, I think. Except for this bar being in the way for when you're trying to gauge your first layers, but beyond that, not bad. Not bad. If you want to see more videos involving this printer down the line, you might want to consider subscribing, because uh, whenever I do get around to making those upgrades, it'll show up in your subscription feed that way. But thanks for watching, y'all. You guys have a good one, and I'll see you guys in the next video.